Good evening, OPN. Welcome, everybody. The are up. We We're are coming up alive. on the 8 o'clock hour. Getting ready we for our return of the call-in show, which I hope is successful. We, the people, Can I get a mic check? How's my... Okay. Oh, thank you, Resist. You beat me ahead of it. So we're going to listen to Patty a little bit. Give people time to get in. <laughs> Cats. Yeah, give me a second. Warm up. When we start getting callers, if you guys will just kind of keep me posted in the chat as to where the sound levels are, that would be helpful.
Good evening, OPN. Thank you guys for being here. I want to make sure my mic is coming in clear. Are we good with that? If somebody could give me a thumbs up. Don't trust nothing, right? All the technology. Okay, uh, before we get into the calls, I want to thank Short Glide for mirroring us tonight on her channel. Uh, congratulations on getting your channel up and running and becoming a producer. That's what we talk about. We like to produce at least as much or more than we consume. I want to uh, thank OWNN and uh, all the other people that are supporting us. And before we start getting uh, into... I might have a loose... <laughs> well, we'll take a call. We got John Zangas calling. Hey, John. Yeah. How are you? I'm doing good. You're live and on the air. Welcome to OPN. That's great. So what's on your mind this evening? You know, we, we got a good visit with you. The DC Media Group did a great, great bit of work today. And tonight's topic is um, how has Occupy affected you? Well, it certainly opened my eyes to so many different things, and both positive and negative, about the world. So many things need action, and it's hard to focus on any one thing without being interrupted by another thing. And um, that's one of the dialectics of being involved in activism. You have to pace yourself. That's one of the things that I've learned, probably one of the most critical lessons I've learned is that if you're not pacing yourself and taking care of yourself, you're going to run yourself right into the ground. So how has it changed me? It's taught me how to manage my personal life as well as my interest in my community and people around me. And would you say that in the time you've been involved with Occupy, you've experienced um, some degree of, of personal growth? Um, have you started doing new things and engaging with the world in new ways? Uh, certainly. My my personal growth, I can't even put a measure on it. From the standpoint of education, uh, from the standpoint of spiritual growth, uh, from the standpoint of interacting with people all around me, um, I've suddenly found that things that were important before I got involved in Occupy have no consequence to me, for example, material things, wealth, those types of things are no longer important to me. Friendships and relationships with other people are suddenly invaluable, and I kind of knew that beforehand, but it never became more apparent to me until I was involved in Occupy and learned about the struggles of people who had both more than me and less than me, and I found that those struggles were all the same no matter who I was dealing with. I often like to say that one of the things I've learned is how much more alike we are than we might know or be willing to admit, you know, with the people across the movement coming from different angles and different places. I think you hit the nail on the head the other night. Everybody has the same challenge with time and resources and the challenges of daily living, and it's a great equalizer. It certainly is. When you consider the fact that at the Arab Spring, folks were troubled by the same things we're troubled by. They were troubled by economic issues and issues of liberties and freedom. And the folks in the Middle East were paying for these things with blood, literally blood. People, hundreds of people were losing their lives as these governments fell in, in the Middle East. Governments that were expected to last for, for more and more decades than they did. All of a sudden, Muammar Gaddafi, uh, he was falling, and that was unbelievable when it started to happen. It happened in a matter of months. But this also happened in Egypt. The regime in Egypt fell very quickly. And this was, by, this was happening by grassroots movement. This is ordinary people in the same struggles that we're here experiencing economic pressures, personal issues, and it's all coming to a head, and it's spreading. It's a global revolution in a lot of ways. 
as long as resources are as imbalanced as they are, these kinds of struggles are going to persist. And I just found that uh, when I was looking at Arab Spring, when I was looking at the Occupy movement, I saw many similarities and many parallels. And I think Arab Spring might have actually been the inspiration for the Occupy. I don't know that for a fact, but it, I suspect that it was. Okay. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to add for the, the viewers and chatters? I'm trying to keep our, our time per caller fairly tight so yeah. we can get more people in, but do you have a closing comment you'd like to offer up? Yes. As One thing that I've learned you know, more recently how important this global warming issue is becoming, it's going to impact people all across the globe because the generation of these fossil of carbon from fossil fuels is affecting people equally everywhere. And, it, and the climates are going to be changing. And this weekend, there's going to be a huge rally at the White House with Bill McKibben and company at 350. The Sierra Club, there was actually an action today that you well know about where many people participated in a act of civil disobedience and were arrested, most notably the Kennedy clan were there, as well as Daryl Hannah. They all sacrificed their liberty for an ecological issue that's very profound and very, it's going to change life on this planet in a very marked way. So that's one of the things that activism does, is it, it puts people in another frame of mind. They're willing to give up things. And like in the Middle East, people gave up their lives because they believed in their liberty so powerfully. And here, people are giving up liberties to be arrested. The Occupy movement produced over 7,000 arrests. So these are kinds, some of the kinds of things that activism bring with it. And anyway, this weekend, we'll be seeing that come more to a head as the, the Global Climate Initiative, or called uh, Climate Forward Initiative, is brought more into the mainstream. Okay, well, we appreciate you calling and your comments, and thank you for all your hard work and being an inspiration and supportive. And I do want to point out to everybody that John is part of the DC Media Group um, that you guys have been hearing about from us, and we will be covering full comprehensive coverage all day on uh, Sunday coming out of D.C. from the Forward on Climate. And you can get all the information off our website at dcmediagroup.info. Thank you, John. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you, Mark, and thank you for your hard work as well. Okay, uh, that was John Zangus. And just to let everybody know kind of where I am with it tonight, I only have one line. So if you call and it's busy, try calling back. And if you start calling and getting messages that the service is not available, let me know in the chat. Um, we want everybody to have a chance to speak. We want to hear your stories. The line is open now, so anybody can call. The number is there on the screen. We'd love to hear your stories. Call-in shows are going to be much better if people call in because I am not going to sit here and talk for an hour even though I could do it. So um, who's next? Who's on stack? Let's hear your story. Ah, here we go. A call coming in. Call from Robin Shortwide. To accept, press 1. To send a voicemail, press Good evening, Shorty. How are you? How are you? I'm doing good, and uh, I want to, you know you're multitasking now because you're producing tonight and you're calling in. How are you? I'm good. Yes, I want to let you know that I'm streaming you live. Well, thank so. you very much for that. Congratulations. So, really quick, because I can see other calls co trying to come in on top of you, but why don't you tell us a little bit about how Occupy has affected you personally? Well, you know, I, I've never been an activist before. I never got really got involved in anything anymore. And the more people talked, the more I listened. And the more I listened, I realized I was the same as them. And um, it's propelled me into, now I have a channel, you know. Um, I, it's just 
I, I am like everybody else. I'm looking for a solution, and I'm hoping that one of our channels will say something to somebody. You know, um, get the word out. Um, that's what Occupy's done for me, is wanting to spread the word. And, and you get make other a good, people involved and on board. You make a good point. Um, you know that you you started out not even being an activist, and you've come this far, and you've started your own channel to help spread the message. And what a powerful statement on the positive effect that happens. And you know we can't encourage people enough to do it. So congratulations to you. I'm really proud of you. Thank you, and I have to give big kudos to Art Stars, who's been helping me and has been so patient with me um, while I learned how to do this. So, um, well, I appreciate the time. I'm not going to take up a lot because I know you got a lot of callers. Um, I love everybody, and peace, love, and solidarity. Thank you so much for calling. Have a good evening, and thank you for mirroring us tonight. Oh, you're very welcome. Anytime, all the time. So, bye-bye. That was uh, one of our friends in Chatter, Short Glide, who actually has a new channel up, Art. So if you can put her channel up in our chat, that will be fine with me. So people can go over there and visit her. And uh, you know, I want to make everybody aware that Art Stars has been a good supporter. He, he has a great channel up, too that focuses not only on Occupy issues, but on art and craft out of his region. Um, it's a beautiful site. He's put a lot of work into it. So I encourage people to take a look at that. So the lines are open. Uh, Z, I saw you tried to call a while ago. So everybody dial those numbers. You know, if it was a lottery, you'd be on speed dial. So it's 828-705-1676. How has Occupy affected you? There's a lot of people here watching. I want people to participate. This show is about you and your, your stories. Good evening, caller. You're on the phone. Who am I speaking with? Hi, this is Ann. It's Cool Revolution. Hello, Ann. Cool Revolution. Good work today. Thank you. Um, so what's on your mind tonight? Uh, you probably have stories just to tell from the day and about, you know, what you experienced. But, you know, mostly we're interested in hearing a little bit on how Occupy has affected you. Um, sure. Am I on the air right now? Yes, Is you're it? on the air right now. <laughs> okay. Then I'll turn off when I'm hearing. Um well, definitely changes has changed the way that I spend my time because, uh, like today, for instance, I you know a tweet goes out that the uh, Sierra Club um, is holding a civil disobedience action today at the White House, um, which is a big deal with the Climate Forward rally coming up this Sunday. And so I hightail it down to the White House um, to cover that. Um you know, this was not really my life before Occupy, um, you know, taking up this journalistic career, so to speak. Um, and, you know, it's 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 different, and it's, it's pretty exciting, too, just to, you know, pick up, run downtown, um, grab my camera bag, um, and start, you know, interviewing people really interesting people. You know, I talked to Bill McKibben today. I talked to Daryl Hannah, the actress. Um, I talked to Michael Brune of Sierra Club. Um, I was jockeying for position with, in, you know, to get good camera angles with CBS News and the AP and, you know, all the major networks um, out there. And, you know, as a citizen journalist, I feel somehow entitled to do that, you know. Um, I've got a, a point of view that, or, or I'm information gathering and analyzing in a way that I, I think people can sometimes appreciate, and um, it's often different than what CBS News is going to give you. 
And it, I think it's also more timely because, you know, I worked with you guys today and your information was getting out in real time, your f photographs, and I know it, it may already be done, but you were doing your summary blogging and photographs this evening, so the things that CBS may or may not speak to tomorrow morning at the earliest, you've already covered and put up for uh, viewers and chatters to to engage with so that speaks well of you and it was great work today by the way you guys did awesome you and o Occupy Carlisle was a fantastic yeah. day yeah our Occupy Carlisle always does a great job yeah it was a lot of multitasking because um, I, I know that people I mean some of the best contribution that I can make is to live tweet um, if I'm there on the spot and um, people really appreciate the pictures and, and you know, especially if they're at work and they can't watch a live stream um, they can follow the tweets and see what's going on, um, see pictures and get, get an idea, you know, an image of, a vision of what's actually happening. Um, so that's really enjoyable. So I'm sort of switching cameras a lot, picking up the phone and, and taking a picture that I can tweet and then getting my nicer camera out and trying to take some, um, really nice photos that I can, um, touch up later. Um, and then gathering a lot of information and interviews that um, I can write blog posts and um, and, and quotes that, that I can do and news later. Yeah, it was a good day, and you put in a long day's worth of work. I appreciate you calling tonight. Do you have any last messages for the listeners? Um, it's great to, to talk to all of you, and I see all of you on chat, and this is awesome. Um, and... You know, I'm looking forward to hearing how Occupy and activism has changed your lives. Okay, so we'll see you on the ground on Sunday. Thank you for all your hard work, and thanks for calling in. Yeah, I'll, talk to, I'll be in touch with all of you on Sunday. Looking forward to it. Good night. Nice. Okay, the lines are open. Those of you who haven't made it yet, feel free to call. As soon as I answer, you are live, so be ready to, uh, you know, tell your story. Um, you know, make sure those dishes are washed and those dogs are quiet. Uh, so I'm getting email messages. Uh, call in. So um, if anybody's calling now and getting a message, just let me know. So that was... Anne, who is another member of the D.C. Media Group. The D.C. Media Group is going to be on the ground Sunday. Um, we're going to start coverage at about 10. We'll have streams for more. Oh, we have an incoming call. Oh, lost it. What happened there? Somebody with a 757 area code. Try again. You know, we are dependent on the cell service here. I should try this with the landline, I guess. So the line is open, and I have a few bars up. Anyway, DC Media Group consists of Organizer X, Cool Revolution, John Zangus, Occupy Carlisle, Taylor Hall, uh, General Knox. I'm just doing them off the top of my head. Uh, oh, Rousseauist. Is also he's not with us tonight because the the spousal unit needed the uh, computer, so the lines are open. Call from Torch cleared. To accept, press one. The voices. Hello, Torchwood. How are you? <laughs> oh, you're there now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got through. I Sorry. Get... Sorry to it dropped. No, I you... can't get the message. <laughs> well, how are you this evening? Pretty good. Here in uh, rainy Chesapeake, Virginia. <laughs> Chesapeake, Virginia. So tell us about, you know, your experience with Occupy and how has it affected your life? Well, I think it's totally changed my life. And as much as, as you can tell by the accent, I'm not from here. Um, and I always felt I was the only liberal in a whole city, um, a whole state of um, Republicans. So when I met you guys, it totally changed how I feel. I I know I'm not. I know I'm not alone. And in actual fact, I don't 
feel like a foreigner anymore. And I used to feel like a foreigner all the time. I lost my politics virginity online in Yahoo Politics chat. And if anybody else has been to Yahoo Politics chat, they'll know that it isn't exactly left wing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, to find Occupy and to find everybody who thinks the same way as I do, it's fantastic. And I have to, you know, let people know, I mean, most everybody I think knows you, but for the newbies, uh, you know, you're a tireless supporter. You tweet and you uh, have been a great help uh, on Occupy Eyes channel. And um, Thank you very much. You, you have Thank come you. to the movement with a force. And it's interesting, so I want to revisit that comment about you felt like you were alone until Occupy. Um, maybe describe the demographic of the area you live in, the Chesapeake Bay area of Virginia. Well, it, it's um, extremely close to Virginia Beach and Norfolk. And um, as you probably know, we have the Navy base in Norfolk, the largest one in the world. And, um, you know, it's a transitory area. People are coming and going all the time. But it is very much a Bible Belt. It's a very, very um, conservative area. It's the home of Pat Robertson and um, his uh, family channel and his um, other show. I can't remember what it's called. Do you remember? Um, not that off the top Pat of Robertson my head, does. but just the words Pat yeah, Robertson you know, is enough. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. So that kind of gives you the idea of what it's like around here. Um, and, you know, we, we have been controversial because we did um, actually vote for Obama um, in our state to make him president. So I was very proud of that at the time. Yeah, but, I think um, one of the I, values... I don't, I'm sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. Now, I was going to say one of the values of having these call-ins and these conversations and, and talking with people is um, everybody it doesn't have the same kind of social political demographic. And those of us that live in the South um, have huge challenges. You know, I, I too, yeah. live in a dark red area to where I am, you know, one of the very few liberal slash progressive people and and our friend Catswoman is up at the north end of the county anchoring that down and I feel with a certain amount of confidence she is the only one up there so it it can be yeah. a lonely feeling and this is a great tool and a great vehicle for us to realize we're not alone and we can continue doing the work it certainly is so, I, you know, I won't keep you long but I just wanted to thank everybody that I've met on chat and everyone in the movement, and I really hope, you know, nothing stops. I hope we keep going. I hope citizen journalism becomes what it is supposed to be, and that is the next phase in, you know, how we're going to tell the truth, how we're going to present the news, and with all our brilliant live streamers, I don't see how we can go wrong. And thank you so much for that challenge and that call to action, because I, I talk about that all the time, how to use our tools, how to act with integrity, how to use Absolutely. factual sources, how important that is. So thank you for pointing that out. And I hope you have, have a good have, evening, and thank I you so much. I have so much respect for OPN, for what you guys are doing, because you've taken it in another direction. And I think that's fantastic. Nobody else on live stream is doing what you guys are doing. I think it's brilliant. Brilliant. Well, thank you for that compliment. That means a lot. I hope you have a good evening and keep up your good works. Thank you. See you on the chat. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> See you in a minute. Bye. Bye. And that was our friend Torchwood. Don't you guys just love her, her accent? It was absolutely wonderful. And her thoughts were so so sincere and so dead-on accurate. Um, if you guys haven't ever been to the area, uh, here we go. Call from 
Tory. Hello, Z. Hey. You're logging on OPM. I was listening. (laughs) (laughs) You were still talking on there. (laughs) Yeah, but, you know, I get a call and I stop talking. I was just about to point out that if if you haven't been to Torchy's area uh, around Norfolk, Virginia, the Norfolk Naval Base is the largest naval base in the United States, I believe, and it could not be any more conservative or any more military-oriented. So it's, it's a tough place for progressives. So... Thank you, Z, for calling. What's what's on with you tonight? Well, I was just listening, and I was thinking about how Occupy has affected me, and there are so many ways that it's affected my life. Um, and lately, I've been kind of um, trying to get back into my daily life and connect with the people in my in my real life because it has taken up so much of my time. Um, and I have really allowed it to monopolize most of my time. But it's all been wonderful. I've made connections with people all over the world, in London, Europe, Greece, you know, um, everywhere, and it's been an amazing ride. Um, I'm finding it really hard to stay connected with people, though, (laughs) and and it makes me sad. Um, because that connection, I think, is what drew us all to Occupy. Um, because I think, you know, people were saying it, in a sense, we all kind of felt out there kind of floundering by ourselves. And it grouped us all together, and, and it connected us in a way that was magical, I think. Um, but also, the amazing thing is that there's something for everybody to do. Like uh, John talked about the activists on the street being arrested. But there are so many activists that aren't physically on the streets, but they're working every day, and they're putting in their time and their energy and their effort just, you know, sending a donation or tweeting something that's going on or, you know, doing like our channel. Whatever it is, um, all of those people are so important, and it gives a voice to those people wherever they can make a difference. Because not everybody can be out there like that. And that's true. And, you know, I want to add to that that there is enough work that needs to be done that everybody can contribute their time, their energy, their interests. So there's enough for everybody to do. So there's so many yeah, ways Yeah, and we you just contribute. have to be careful not to overburden yourself with it because there is so much to do. Well, yeah, well, I, I can't speak intelligently to that, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you're lucky you don't have kids. So for us that have like, kids, it's a lot more difficult. Yeah, I, I but, actually, it's important. Everybody needs to know, you know, I do, I do have a little bit more latitude, but all the time I spend not at my day job, I spend around this so i i can't Im- imagine what it's like that to take care of a family mrs artister is pretty self-sustaining so other than the animals <laughs> you know well the animals take up a lot of time to do <laughs> yep so do you have anything you'd like to leave the listeners with tonight it's so good to hear your voice you sound like you're doing well yeah i am um yeah i just want to say that um i'm so blessed to be um connected to this movement and to have met the people that I've met. They've touched me in ways that they'll never know. Um, and it's just been a wonderful experience altogether. Well, thank you for calling in and thank you for all the hard work you've spent on our channel and also for the work you've done for other people. Um, Z has been a tireless worker and I've worked with her since I guess September, October of 2011 when we first uh, got working together. So, you know, thank you for that. You've been a huge addition to my life, and thank you for calling. Well, back at you. And I will talk to you later and call in, guys. I want to hear all your stories. Tomorrow (laughs) tomorrow morning, Democracy Now! Z's morning show, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Yeah, tomorrow morning. Be there. (laughs) All right. Bye. Bye. Okay, the line is open. Uh, let's hear some of you who, uh, you know, 
was here some of you who who never get a chance to speak up or speak out um, those of you who don't have your own channels those of you who have something to say or a story to tell and your voice hasn't been been heard um, I'm giving you our platform just dial the number and we'll put you on air when I answer you are live so be ready to go don't be shy uh, I want to say hi to all our friends that are here amigo uh, Anita good evening how are you organizer X is dropping in the house uh, Ruby's got to read read to the grandkids for Dr. Seuss. So here's a call coming in. Let me see who it is. Call from Northern. To accept, press one. To send a. Be still, my beating heart. It's Northern Ontario guy on the phone, live from OWNN. Welcome, sir. Good evening, Mr. Artister, and congratulations. I have been waiting for this show to get back on the air, and I'm quite, quite uh, pleased that it is. And um, how has uh, Occupy uh, changed, uh, or uh, what's Occupy done for me? I'll tell you, there's about 50 years of work to get done in about two or three years. That's how I see it. And uh, it's changed. Uh, it's changed my latter part of life of what was planned and what is happening. And uh, there's so much to do, and there's so much to build yet that uh, it's just remarkable that uh, that uh, we still have us core groups of people here and there, and and the people that I've met around the world and and made friends with, and and it's just. It, I, I'm just flabbergasted every day at the goodwill and, and what has to be done yet. There's so much that has to be done, and we all know it. And everybody's keeping at it. There seemed to be a little bit of a shrink in the last, uh, uh, especially in the channels over the past while. But, again, there's been channels that have safeguarded the, the core group of the online and 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 now that's starting to mushroom again and and I, I even on the news end uh, you know we we're fighting a war an information war and whoever wins this information war is going to win the war and we won the initial information uh, information war but we have to keep it up and the only way to win the information war is get bigger than the mainstream media itself and that's why I keep harping away about more and more news channels. And they are so, so much needed, especially now in the United States, because there's a total lack of news channels in the new media for the United States, such as what OWNN is doing. I mean, we are Canadian-based, but, but there should be national flagship carriers such as Earth, such as Unity, or, or even new ones getting back into operation again. And I just pray that there is, because there is so much information out there, OWNN is not even scratching the surface of what is out there. And this information more has to be won. I cannot stress that enough. And the only way that people are going to know what's going on is by getting the news and 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 disseminating that news and and finding a place to dump the news and and getting it out there. And uh, so, in that sense, that Occupy has changed my life. I had no idea. I had no idea that I uh, one year ago, if somebody had said to me that I'd be doing what I'm doing today, I would have told them to have their head tested. In uh, three easy steps, and uh, that's how much my life has changed with Occupy. And I just, I'm just again, uh, there's so much to be done yet. Um, I concur a hundred percent, and we we've, we've chatted about this in the past. And um, I really want to compliment you on what you're doing with your channel. Uh, just a almost daily expansion and a level of quality you bring to the enterprise, but also, and I think this is more importantly, that you and OWNN have been single-handedly inspiring people to start their own programs. And you say this a lot on OWNN about the necessity of more and more and more channels. And I think I think you're right. I I, I 
I will debate whether we need to be bigger than than mainstream media. I do absolutely think we need to be better than ma- mainstream media, and you you bring the tireless effort to that. So thank you so much for your example and inspiration, and and thank you for taking the time off tonight to call into our show. I'm not saying, uh, again, I'm not saying OWNN is correct. I believe that OWNN will be just a stepping stone for somebody that comes along and says, you know what, I can do better than OWNN. And you know what, the first time I see it, that's when I know I'll, I can sign off and get back to my <laughs> my retirement years. But... In the meantime, it's our responsibility. It doesn't matter what channel it is. It's our responsibility to encourage, to uh, to uh, to uh, do everything in our power to help to help empower people to get on with what has to be done with with uh, Occupy. And there's so much, again, there's so much to be done. And I just hope that, I just hope that other channels take up the challenge of refocusing where they're coming from and get into the news more and start the creative process more instead of, instead of what has been happening. And, and, and there's nothing but growth. I can see, I can see in the United States alone four regional carriers that are needed. A couple of national carriers, and and why you you said that well, you it's more is not necessarily better, but once you spread this out over, over the globe, that's what I'm getting at. We need a European channel that encompasses all of the European zone, and then the feeder channels into that. When I you have to have a strategy for winning an information war, and and Canada we need a we in Canada we need a. We need a news channel in the West. We need one in the East, and then we need uh, as regional carriers, and then we need at least two national carriers. Why I always say two or three? Because con- everybody says, oh, no, we're not competing. I'm sorry, we are. Competitive leads to better programming, innovation, creativity. So in that sense, I will challenge anybody that says that we shouldn't be competitive. Competitive in a friendly way and helping each other. And that's the key to all of it, because if we all contribute to collective effort for common good, everybody benefits. And that's enough of my pontificating tonight, and I encourage people to call in, and I uh, I certainly encourage this program to continue. In fact, on this program, I would like to see a longer program uh, uh, with what you're doing. And... uh, with music and what you're doing, and and uh, uh, and keep at it so that it just keeps on growing and growing and growing. and pretty soon you could end up with eight hour uh, call in program. Uh, <laughs> even that, even that in itself could be uh, another channel in itself, a call in channel where uh, where it's in three shifts, eight hour shifts, or or whatever. Uh, again. It, the possibilities are limitless here in this uh, new media, and it's those who 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 uh, can can see past what we're doing now and look at the future and what will be needed. And I'm saying now, this is all nothing but stepping stones. Uh, what we're doing right now, but at least we're taking the first steps. That's the most important part. And with that, have a good evening, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for calling, sir, and we'll see you for the 11 o'clock news. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'll have to watch uh, Chicky Mark there first. (laughs) (laughs) Have a good evening. Have a good evening. All right, bye. That was our friend Nog from OWNN running a great, great station over there. So um, there, Johnny Greed. Call from John Leonard. To accept, press 1 to send a voicemail. Turn your radio down, man. Or your TV, whatever it is. There you go. Go ahead, call. You're on the air. How can I help you? Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we have the world famous Johnny Greed on the phone and calling in. Did somebody and I, order a pie? And I just want, I just want to... Uh, 
I want to point out that uh, Johnny's been very active. You know, he's a tireless contributor and supporter of OPN, but we're not big blah, enough blah, for blah, him blah, blah. because he has spread his wings and he's flying to OWNN now. So he's got two channels under under his vision, and we all benefit. Yeah, you from never it. forget where you where you respond, and you got me first. All right, you bastard. <laughs> There's no pill, no point me off on that. So okay, and, buddy. Well, hey, how are you? Good, but, I'm fine, and I don't even want to talk about the Occupy South Lake because you're, you're asking for new callers. I had this little spiel set up for for new callers, so I just, uh, this is a little sort of like a public service announcement that I'm doing a, a tutorial for the people who are tentative about calling. So it's okay if you're going to feel nervous or get stage fright. It's not okay to let that hold you back. If you give in to the fear, then the powers that be will win without us even fighting back. And this is the safest form that we have to practice it. We're amongst friends. So you go ahead. You make some mistakes in front of a couple of friends, but you get your strength, your confidence, your speaking voice up, and then you can speak anywhere to anyone. <sighs> you know, so we're better to cut one's teeth than in a safe haven like this. And the more you practice, the better you get at it. Like those early days when, when you first discover the joy of pleasure in yourself. You got better with practice, right? <clears throat> okay, enough of that. Uh, l little ways I found that it helped. You can make a little list, some crib notes to aid you in case you get stuck or flustered. So when you have a little brain for it, you got a little skeleton of a script to go to so you're not lost and you don't have to be, you know, you get getting stuck in the embarrassment. Is, that's where where people freeze up. So you have a little skeleton of a script to go to so that you're never lost. When you are lost, you go someplace and, and, and you can keep going. And every time you call in, it becomes easier. Uh... So, and it, well, I will, I'll skip, skip, skip. Uh, hey, and we all have voices, and it's sure that this world needs to hear all the things we each might have to say. So don't let somebody else, don't let me say it for you. Say it for yourself. Let me step back, and you, you people step up. Everybody's got a voice. That's one of the things that did from our play also. <clears throat> and it's okay if we falter, or if our voices are shaky and waver. At least we try. Tag it. <clears throat> I... uh, and if you fuck, if you... No, no, go ahead. I don't want to cut you off. You're doing great. <laughs> All right. Well, just because I organized it into a little, uh, I write myself a little email and then I organize it. That was the part I skipped. <laughs> so I can read down and, and just fire these things off rapid fire. Right, uh, and if you try a few times public speaking and you truly fail, if the public speaking is definitely not your medium, you can still do something else. You can just... We can still do what we can do in other ways. You'll gravitate to the things you're most comfortable with, and the more you do it, the better you get. Don't freeze yourself in fear. And I have a, a note here. Listen again to the story of stuff, the different roles, the activist, the communicator, the healer, nurturer, the researcher, etc. You know, and there are other roles after all, so that's just way, one way of looking at it. But everybody can do something. Everybody can be good at something. And every little thing that we do that empowers or revalidates ourselves and it sets, it sets an example to others near and far. You never know how, how the inspiration that you might give or represent to anybody, a, pa a passive bystander or a little child, whether it's a, you know, one of your own kids, a neighbor's kid, somebody from school, some, somebody at the park that you don't know, but, you know, by doing something right, by doing, you know, whether it's a random act of kindness or doing the right thing, doing the right thing is the example that you want to set. Uh, you know, the, the truth Honor, honesty, transparency, you know, these are the, the moral imperatives that we want to promote. You live them, act them, be them, and, and you become a beacon, a shining light of, of those attributes. And the more people see them, the more they'll reflect them. I got a little off on my rant there, but all right, so a passive bystander, a little child, a hopeless elder, a wayward teen or a timid co-worker, a remote occupier, or some other demonstrator. You know, so random acts of kindness, presenting the world with a genuine smile, being involved and acting on what inspires oneself, campaigning for a cause one believes in or against one that one detests, doing with the right mix of calm, sanity, and the passion that you feel inside. If you give in to fear, then the powers that be win by default, and that is just unacceptable. Okay, that's the end of my first part of the rant, and uh, I'm going to get off the phone and let these other people who don't have a voice, I'm stepping back so they can step up, and I also want you to know, it's, it's 10 to 9, you aren't having only a one-hour show, right? Because I still have another call in coming, but I'm going to wait, wait, wait. I want five or ten other people to call in first. Well, and now um, my rant is done. It's, it, well, hang on, I don't want you leaving just yet. It, it's, 
it's a show I'll go for past an hour as long as we get calls, but I'm not going to talk to hear my own self. But I want to thank you for that. Um, it was extremely helpful. We need to post that in the in the uh, OPN website blogs, like how to call in and how to use your voice. And just before you go, in in a minute or so less, I want you to tell the people how Occupy has changed or affected your life. I can't do it in a minute. I'm going to call back later. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for that. That was a teach-in. We got it right here. A teach-in live. That was just Johnny's public service announcement. That's all. Johnny's public service announcement. Thank you very much, buddy. All right. Love all you guys. Stay strong. Do good. Yada, yada, yada. All right. I'll, I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. Bye. And all you quiet people, speak up. This is your time. This is... Find out if you're cut out for this. Get better. Get better. Practice. All right. Thank you. Ciao. So, uh, cats, if, did you see my my message? If you will email me your number, I will call you so you don't have to pick up the toll because um, I know that's that's challenging. So, thank you, Johnny Greed, for an outstanding primer on how to use your voice. Now, I hope everybody listened to that. I hope you avail yourself of that advice. Uh, we need to hear stories from people. Some of our new friends that are on here. I, I see uh, Mrs. Art Stars was on here. Uh, Anita or Art Stars itself. Um, anybody can call. There's Everybody has a story. And that's why we're doing this show tonight. Because we want to hear your stories. How has Occupy affected you? How has the movement for social change affected you? Um, positively or negatively. Um, <laughs> Stratty. I'm not, no, I'm just being generic. You know, for, for those of you who um, aren't aware, I've been uh, trying to convince uh, Strat to do an interview. With us. So here we have a call coming in. Call from Amigo Online. To accept press. Be still, my beating heart. Is this Amigo? <laughs> yes, mi hermano Mark. This is Amigo. Your Amigo. And a lot of Amigos all over the world. I'm so glad to finally be speaking to all of you. And uh, sending you, as always, much hugs from Mexico. And now, since North uh, called in, and I'm calling uh, from the South, we're going to make a sandwich of a uh, U.S. <laughs> <your> sandwich. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> I love you so much. Uh, you uh, uh, are a uh, and uh, and uh, so many people in so many streams. And uh, I, uh, there are... Uh, so many people that I I um, I believe they're my family uh, away from home, my home away from home. But I got I got you all here at home uh, inside my home. And uh, anyway, I just uh, uh, wrote on the back. So I, I won't be uh, stumbling that much because my English is not that <laughs> good. But uh, so I can let other people participate. I would love to hear. Um, so many voices. Um, um, <laughs> I'm watching TCC. Yes, <laughs> finally I can go. <laughs> I'm not LOL and stuff like that. I will encourage people to mumble also because that makes me practice a lot my English so I can be more fluent and um, to make videos, to uh, to do any type of art, to do music to do um, uh, uh, anything uh, you can do with what you have. Uh, a lot of people uh, try to or uh, wait for, to have the uh, right equipment or to have the money or to have the, the time or whatever, but uh, some of the stuff uh, never comes. And uh, uh, just do what you can with uh, what you have. And... Uh, well, uh, the way uh, this uh, movement affected me, 
well, it, it affected me in many ways, uh, but more so in the positive sense. Uh, the only two negative parts of it was that my obsession towards occupied uh, world worldwide took me to the hospital for a week. Uh, a lot of you will know that story. I don't want to get into that because I was 24-7 and I uh, was running a YouTube channel and uh, uh, which it was, it, it was called All the World 99. Uh, some of you might remember it. I had to close it because it had too much too much um, viewers and too, too it became too big for me to handle and uh, I wasn't getting any sleep at all and uh, so I had to close it to come down after I came out of the hospital and, uh, and the other uh, negative part of it was that I couldn't do much of people from far away countries uh, and uh, it's frustrating uh, uh, for uh, for many people, I've seen I, I've seen that that is a a big uh, frustration, and uh, sometimes it gets people depressed. And uh, it's easy to say, "Oh, uh, just uh, be good uh, with your family and uh, with uh, people you love," and uh, and that'll make like a domino effect. And some people may think, "Well, that won't change the one percenters. That won't." Uh, uh, do lots of stuff, but it really does. You, we can't be uh, a light in the streets and a candle in the streets and darken our houses. And uh, uh, so I try to balance things. And uh, uh, I wanted to say also that, uh, well, I spent most time um, on the English uh, streams because... Um, because uh, it's sad for me to say that uh, even Mexican streams are too, uh, well, most of them, uh, the, the few of them that we have are very vulgar and uh, uninformed and aggressive. And, um, and uh, it's just awful to be, to be, to, to try to, to communicate uh, uh, on those streams. And even some other Spanish uh, speaking streams around the world. So it's hard for me to communicate uh, on those streams. It's easier for me to do any uh, English uh, speaking streams to communicate. And um, uh, I found good and bad everywhere, lovely people everywhere. I mean, I found more coincidences than differences. All around the world. I mean, we all have we all have um, uh, our own cultures and uh, 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 our own ways. But uh, in the end, uh, we're fighting the same. I, I believe that we're fighting the same thing <laughs> all over the world. It doesn't matter what it, uh, what country you are you're in, and um, and uh, uh, it's it's good to be informed. Uh, on what's happening in Europe and uh, in the U.S., in Canada, in Australia, of course, in Yemen and, and Syria and everywhere. And uh, it, it's, it's good to be informed. And I've learned so, so many things. And uh, most of all, I uh, learned how to connect with people. And we're using the technology that's that's uh, part of what uh, Northern Nut Guy said that uh, we need to 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 use it in our in our um, uh, for 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 ourselves for us uh, we have we have to take advantage of that and start uh, really um, um, uh, trying to uh, keep down mainstream media I don't know how to say that but. Um, that was we need to way. do it, and we need to do it all together, you know? Yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm, I spoke too much. No, no, <laughs> it was great. I thought you you said exactly what we needed to do with mainstream media. Um, it's wonderful to hear your voice, and thank you so much for your inspiration and your energy. And I, I just wanted to share this with you, and I want everybody to hear it. Um, do you know, every night now, my lullaby 
before before I call it a uh, end of a day, which is really late for me, you know, after Nog's eleven o'clock news, is I stay up to watch that I have a dream video every night, and it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen since the movement started. And thank you for doing that and showing showing it and sharing it with us. Oh no, I I I, I thank you. I it's it's uh. Another way to encourage uh, musicians and artists uh, from all over the world that uh, to be doing this. It doesn't matter if it's a. Uh, I mean, you don't do it uh, to make money. In, in, uh, of course, I made it uh, royalty free and everything. I don't feel right making a single cent out of anything I do for the movement uh, around the world. It's just uh, I have a conflict uh, on that. But I did it with uh, my heart. And uh, that video, really, the, I looked for the um, the uh, chants before, and lots of videos, and uh, the chants really made the music. I just wrote a little music and did a few words, and there's a lot of people that can help me with uh, with a lot of lyrics, And but uh, I did it with all my heart and really made the, me, my heart, warmer to see that people loved it and liked it. And, of course, encouraged me to, to do more, a lot more. I just need to organize my time, balance things, don't get uh, uh, too um, uh, don't get too obsessed with things. I mean, sometimes I don't want to miss a second on what's going on in the world. And, uh, and uh, so we got we we to gotta live, too, you know, and uh, we got to, well, at least in my case, I got to balance things because I have lots of things I want to do. But thank you very much for that. And uh, I'll let other people um, uh, speak. I want to listen to, oh, so many people I love, and finally listen to them. And this, like uh, North said, uh, this, this should be this could be a very good idea, um, um, uh, Art, uh, to be doing this, and maybe longer, so a lot more, more people could call in. So thank you for listening to me. Much hugs to everybody. This is Amigo, los quiero mucho. Desde Mexico, from Mexico City, to everybody, to all the streams, fighting for 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 everybody. Thank you very much. Much hugs and good night. Thank you, buddy. We love you. Thank you for everything. That was our friend Amigo Nine calling from Mexico. So we have been made into an international sandwich tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We have. The heartland of Canada calling us. We have the southland of Mexico calling us. Um, let's hear from some people in between. Um, I see a lot of names flying by on the stream that uh, we never get a chance to talk to. So there's a phone line open. And if you guys will hold on, I'm going to call Cat's Woman right now. So I'm going to be doing the dialing. So um, let me let me get that out there. So hold on, please. So we want our friend Katz to be able to have a chance to talk. A one ringy dingy. Hey, Art. Good evening, Katz. You're on OPN. Good to have you. Uh, great to be here. Are you live now, or are you still waiting to talk to somebody? No, we're live now. You are on the air, so far away. Tell us what you're thinking and what you're feeling, and how has Occupy affected you? Occupy, like so many other people, woke me up. It's like finally something that I can do, you know. Um, however, I lost a lot of friends because of it. They, uh, they all were all worried, and oh, you're you're affiliated with these dangerous people, and. You go to stop. I mean, I've lost friends. They read me on Facebook, won't talk to me anymore. But um, I just think the whole world woke up at the same time. The entire world. It was incredible. And it's changed me because I have, I feel like I have a, you know what I mean, a voice, a purpose. And I am very nervous. <laughs> right. And now, just to help people understand where you're coming from, sort of the same question that you know, I posed a torch. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the area you live in and how and why it is that you can feel socially and politically isolated, if you will. 
Well, we, I live in the mountains, not too far from you, and it's very Republican and very Bible Belt. I also have two mixed children. Um, so I think people just, they, they don't want to rock the vote. Like, they had the first Gay Straight Alliance meeting at the library, and someone bashed my car. <laughs> Um, that kind of thing. So, so people are very Republican, very Bible Belt. They all, anywhere you go, there's Fox News on the screen. And, That's why it's kind of. Yeah, and tragically, not really an open-minded environment, too. For those of you guys who don't know, Kat and I live in the same area. She lives in the north end of the county, and I live in the south end of the county. It's very rural, very yeah. conservative. Um, it's really hard to get any kind of progressive, even a discussion, uh, never, never mind progressive action. So there's a small handful of us who just chip away at it. And, um, yeah, yeah you, even those people I thought that would be positive of it and, and I mean, supportive of it, they're not. And a lot of my, a lot of my friends are very liberal. They're all art, you know. Um, I don't know. They just surprised me. They really did. That's why I was so happy to see you. And I remember Kim and Pat, I think her name was, used to stand on the corner by Ingalls every Wednesday. And, you know, hold signs up against the war. And people just kind of laughed at them and made fun of them. It's like, oh, my goodness. Imani heard about them. My daughter heard about them in school. We need, we, these people need to, it's like, they, they almost don't want to agree with it just because, even if they agree, even if they like it, you know what I mean? Some of the ideas. Right, right. But deliberately force themselves, I won't like any of those ideas or anything those people say because they want to hate us so much. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it, it's a it's a tough tough environment, but you know other people have similar challenges, and somehow um, we use what tools we have and what resources we have, and we try to come together and um, do some good things. So I'm I'm really happy we had a chance to hear your voice and to speak with you and so would you like to leave the viewers and chatters with any any last words my last words is just thank y'all thank y'all for sticking with this there's so many of us here that have been here more than a year um, we've been around the world and i just think it's great i love y'all thank you very very much <laughs> thanks all i appreciate it Thank you very much, Kat, and thank you for, you know, I want to point out that Kat is a tireless supporter of OPN, and she's really jumped in on uh, to help out with DC Media Group and, you know, spreading the word, um, you know, via the Twitters and uh, linking up, and she is just a really good advocate, so thank you very much. And you're very welcome. Bye, guys. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off. I just kind of fat fingered the phone. So um, we have an open line now because I'm a klutz. So if anybody would like to call in, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, that was our friend Kat's woman up at the northern end of the county. Um, DJ Resist, Georgia Boy. Any of you guys, we would love to hear your stories. I, I'm really interested in, you know, some of the people who have been doing some uh, background ground work. Um, you know, always like to know the backstories. Um, so if anybody feels like you want to call and share them, that would be fantastic. Um, if not, you know. We'll wrap it up if uh, people are losing interest or have other things to do. Um, I can certainly understand that. I think we're all challenged, like Amigo said, with uh, keeping the balance and all that. Abby, you can call. There's the phone number on the screen. Anybody can uh, give a call in and let us hear your story. How has Occupy affected you everybody has a story we have to share it because our stories are what connects us through our humanity um, I first started doing OPN for that very reason we didn't have you know there's a lot of action and activity but there wasn't a lot of context and one of the things we have to be cautious of with media 
is whether or not we're losing the humanity. So, um, you know, very important to remind each other that we are people and we have a lot of things that we're in common with each other. Because from those commonalities, we can build our connections. So that's important. Phone lines are open. Is, are you guys calling and getting the message that it's not available? What? what was, did Z ask a question? I missed it running by. Are, how did Occupy affect you? This is I'm the interviewer, not the interviewee. I will say it has significantly cut down on my sleep time. And um, I am a working artist. And... The arena I operate in is mostly craft artists, and I'm not a craft artist. Or, or I was. I was a potter for years, and you know I painted, and then I started thinking content mattered more than objects, which put me in a minority in an environment of craft. I don't believe work going on a pedestal serves anything. So um, I started getting really involved in using art for activism, and then I went and uh, spent a summer living with Bread and Puppet. And that's where I learned to integrate art and activism. And then when Occupy came around early on, I was like, hey, this is, this is, this is something. There's something going on here, and it's quite clear it's nascent, and it's not figured out yet, but I want to be a part of helping make it happen. My favorite thing was... Um, I wanted to go to Zuccotti in the early days when they were building the camp, when they had all the infrastructure, the library and everything, because they were literally building a functioning community. And I wasn't interested in the scene. I wanted to go up there and help work um, because that's where my interest is. And so it wasn't practical for me to get up there. So um, the next best thing was doing it online, and that's how I got involved. Um, so now all I you know, the art that I make. And I had this conversation this past week as somebody said, well, you haven't done, you know, a show, a gallery show, or you haven't, you know, I build these big puppet shows and do, you know, puppet performances and all that stuff. And I haven't done anything like that since Occupy started. Um, and they were like, oh, you don't make work anymore. I said, listen, you know, I, I do this all the time. And it just occurred to me that, I've done over a hundred uh, of these long interviews. And so as a body of work, I have this huge body of work and more than I ever have had in my life uh, following any one idea. And so it occurred to me that this, this, what I'm doing now, these radio shows, the interviews, working with the channel, helping other people on their channels, all that, that, that is my my art so um how was that for an answer so I, I guess i'm waiting for a call and uh if not <laughs> which is it just explains why i'm so big on arts and activism and why um i have a special place in my heart for um occupy the stage in new orleans for the work they're doing they you know, this, this weekend during Mardi Gras, they protested every day. They had floats. They had everything had a message, but it was all in fun and in a creative manner. Ah, a call. Thank you. Call from Ruby. Oops, your caller just hung up. Press 2 to call. Good evening, Ruby. Ruby. Is it Ruby? Call from Abby. Hello, oh. caller. You're on the phone. I don't know whether I have Abby or Ruby. This is Abby. Hi, Abby. Thank you for calling. <laughs> How are you today? Okay, I'm going to have to turn. Hang on. I got to turn my volume down. I'm getting really confused. Okay. Um, I'm doing good. I just got back from streaming a protest. Um and Madison, Wisconsin, so I can talk about that. Oh, that would be great. 
Okay. Um, uh, today, um, Scott Walker was meeting with the WNC, which is the Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce. Um, they're an affiliate of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and basically he was meeting with them to get his report card from his real constituents, ones that give him money, um, and the, the ones that he represents as opposed to the people he is supposed to represent. Um, so there were three scheduled protests today. I wasn't able to go to the earlier ones, but I heard there wasn't real good turnout. I went to the 5 o'clock. Um, we had about probably about 40 or 50 people there, um, and the Solidarity Singers were there. Um, the Solidarity Singers are a group of people that sing in the Capitol every day, Monday through Friday, from noon to one. Um, they have received, I don't even know, numerous citations. Um, there's been arrests um, for singing and the lunch hour. Uh, and they were there and they sang. And John Nichols from The Nation um, was there and he made a speech. Um, we had a talking and I missed this, but my friend saw it um, while John Nichols was speaking. Apparently, um, the the young man who made the sign, and it was very small in pink chalk, um, was uh, addressed by a police officer um, who told him that he was not allowed to do to put a peace sign in the chalk there. Um, we were located in between the Capitol and the. Um, Monona Terrace, which is where the convention or the meeting was with the um, WMC, um, and and I was really happy to hear some of the stuff. People, uh, quite a few people, made speeches. They actually have the stream archived on my um, UStream, and what was really coming out was people saying, "Let's stop uh, just addressing the state government, which we've been doing a lot of in Wisconsin to no avail." And let's start directing our protest this direction and point it, because we were in between the Capitol and Monona Terrace, and they pointed at Monona Terrace, where the WNC was meeting, because those are the real people that are making the decisions um, for our government now. Um, they fund them, they own them, they control them, and the government, local government does what they're directed to do by the backers. And so I was really excited to see that, because I've been waiting for that moment. Um, we can, yes, we should continue to um, protest to our government, um, Absolutely, but we've got to also make it clear that we know what's going on and we know who's behind us and who's funding it and why our government isn't representing us anymore. So that's where I was tonight. It was really fun and it was really cold. Yeah, well, um, thank you for doing that work. And I think you hit a good point there. It's very important to let them know that we know and remind them at every chance we get, you know, we're not stupid. They have the the power, but we have the voices, and um, we can use that. So, I want to get your like your overview on how Occupy has affected you, and how working in the movement has affected your life. Um, the way it's affected my life is just is kind of what I was just talking about, where I um, I became active actually before the protest came out, I think I started to see the direction the wind was blowing a few years before the protest in Wisconsin broke out, and I was closely following um, politics, and I was into the entire party thing. I did a lot of canvassing. I did a lot of, um, you know, just following the candidates, sponsoring or supporting them, donating. Um, and then Scott Walker came along and just devastated our state, you know, cut the education funding, cut Medicaid. Um, so I was out protesting against Scott Walker. And, you know, we had over 100,000 people at the Capitol twice. We had over 40,000 several times. Um, and we did everything we could. We canvassed for recalls for our state senators that supported him. We canvassed to recall him. We got enough signatures. And, of course, we lost that election. I started to see shady stuff in our election. And, and during that time, we kept appealing to the Democrats in the state, you know, to back us and calling them. And I saw a lot of um, saying the right words, but then maybe their actions and their votes, you know, and it wasn't all of them, but there was definitely there. It wasn't, their words weren't 
the matching their actions. And I kept confronting them. And then when Occupy came out and it started just talking about the 99% and the 1% and the, you know, Wall Street's influence on our government and the corporations and then really looking at where this money comes from to fund these campaigns, it really started shifting my focus um, away from just straight party politics and really seeing where the cause of the problems were. And it gave me a lot deeper understanding of how our system is so corrupt. And and it's so embedded and it's so deep. And what really, really um, changed in me um, from Occupy and, and talking to people on the streams and following was this was a global problem. And it, I always had seen it as a United States thing. I didn't understand the depth of it. I didn't understand what was going on in Canada, what was going on in Spain and Greece and in Ireland. And, you know, and I learned so much more and how... Um, it just it just went from like a microscope to you know all of a sudden I saw just how vast this was and what we're up against, and meeting people from all over the world, um, and talking and and hearing the same they're they're having the same issues and um, it's all of our struggle and so seeing it as differently that this isn't about party politics this is about people understanding what's really going on and uniting together because we have a lot to overcome and until we start all understanding what we're up against and uniting and stop fighting with each other we can't take it on so um trying to understand that and yeah i get sucked into arguments everybody knows that about me i love to argue um but i don't see anyone in occupy as my enemy and um and I think that we're all wanting the same thing. We just sometimes don't all see the same problems. But trying to, to work through that, I guess. Well, it's a evolutionary experience, and that was you know nicely summarized too. Um, I want to thank you for calling in, and thank you for your work. And um, just I think you made a good point. You know, it is it is a global issue. It's not just us. It's not just our country. It's every person in the universe that is not part of the ruling elite um it matters yeah. equally to us all so thank you for pointing that out sure i hope thanks you have a good evening thanks for your work and thanks for calling sure. bye bye okay so you guys could hear um while we were um on that line oh, getting a little feedback sorry about that i don't know what that's about must have a bad connection somewhere, probably. Um, so I'm getting all kinds of little messages here. Whoever was the, uh, let me see, the 5-3, there's a 5-3-0 number that was calling. And you tried several times, so we have a gap in the gap in the in the system now. So you know now would be a good time to to give us give us a call. We'd love to hear what you have to say. And um, I have some notes coming in through my top secret um, OPN secure communications modalities. That uh, say we may have a may have a special special guest that if I can connect with them, or maybe not. Maybe I'm just making stuff up. Uh, more of this will be good as long as people pe keep participating. So, yeah. So so that's the thing. The call-in show is much more interesting. Now, didn't you guys love hearing Abby, <laughs> Anita, Anita, and Arts are, are battling it out? Who's going to call? Who's going to call? Can we call in with Skype? Thorstein. You know, um, I bet we can if you guys want me, while I'm waiting for a call, let me see. Um, we can do a Skype audio, Thorstein. Does that sound like that'll work for you? Um, yeah, so let me see here. That way we can get some international people in. So while I'm waiting for a call, you guys chat amongst yourselves. You want me to put on some music while I'm setting this up? Or should we just uh, roll with it? Georgia boy should call Thorstein. Let's see here. I'm thinking we can get this to go. So, Thorstein, I'm 
Uh, MB Arster on Skype. Shows up as MB. So, um, I'm online with Skype now. So, if you want to, um, <laughs> man, I can't hide. So, call from John Mead. To accept, press one to send a voicemail. Way to go, buddy. This isn't my this isn't my caller, but if you make if you make a pass, well, I gotta turn it down. Are we on? Yeah, yeah, we're on. We okay. If you make up a pass, I'll post my notes so people can read them. Oh, it's clearly on the stream. She was on earlier. Um, I'm kind of running. I can make a make a pad. That's a good good thing. Hang on, I'll put a pad up. Hang on, gotta get on. Right, you, I'll, I'll get off the phone. You post it, and I'll put my notes on. But I'm gonna I'm gonna hold back the ones from because I've been making up a whole list of. Uh, I do have some occupied learn stuff that I'm gonna. To, so be, before you uh, yeah, before you call the show over, you say, all right, John, this is your, your follow up call. Uh, cl right? Clearly, putting up a patch. You'll put the link in 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 a moment in the chat. Right, but your show ain't over until I call back again. Yeah. Uh, well, we're, I'm waiting for this. Till the fat man sings. Yeah, yeah. This, you, know, you can jump in if it gets slow, because I'm waiting for somebody from Europe, I think. Uh, well, well, you just let me, you type out, say, give me a damn call. No, you're on the line. I'll pop in. But I want other people to stop to step up, you know, and I'm going to post those things on the link so they can sort of get a clue. When nobody's stepping up now, so if you got something to say, you have the floor. I'm waiting for Thorstein to... Uh, this is a good time right now. Yeah, sure. For me to, to, to uh, so that I'll, that means you're just you brushing off. me off. So I'm not going to get the call back again later. No, I'll cut you off <laughs> if I need to. I might, I might not have been done with my damn list. <laughs> right, let's see. Well, here, here are some of the things that I've learned. That once radicalized, there's no going back. The blue pill, red pill choice doesn't get undone, and that the red pill is for waking up, but it doesn't mean you're a red stater. Right. And, and that ten cities in urban areas can lead to territoriality and ego and other human frailties, and they're unsustainable, basically, which, you know, we're always shooting for sustainability, but they're basically unsustainable, and Bloom actually did a, you know, if, if he would, didn't become, if he would have waited another week or two, Occupy would have disintegrated by itself in the park, <laughs> but because he became a threat that we could reunite against, that it worked and it reunified us. It was, it was it, you know, he actually saved Occupy, the jackass. <laughs> Gotta love the man. <laughs> For that part of it, anyway. Uh, yeah, so, and, and, but, and I've seen Susie Q and a couple other people in uh, Occupy have a couple of running conversations on it. Uh, but hit and run encampments, as opposed to a long term encampment, or a long term encampment, but with just hit and run residents. So, so folks don't get too entrenched or too burnt out. Those are both things you have to look out for. Uh, also, Occupy can turn into an addiction, so one must keep it under some semblance, semblance of control so we aren't consumed totally. Now, personally, I prefer a very high tolerance recreational Occupy usage, personally, but uh, you know, everybody gets to make their own call on that. You know, but you can't just totally consume yourself and then have to give it up. That just means Occupy lost a good occupier, so never abuse Occupy past your personal limit. That's my that's my advice to all you occupy users out there. <laughs> Be a user, not an abuser. Uh, okay, and uh, next, uh, oh, doing nothing is no longer a viable option for me. I've learned that from Occupy, and I've learned the need to remind myself of my need to tolerate others and to live the change that I want to see. I've learned that folks have acted, let's just say, disruptive in other channels. And unpleasant, upstanding, occupied citizens in channels where there is no scorecard of the former strife. So it seems to being open and welcoming and a little tolerant is a fine, fine way to bring out the best in others. Or alternatively, alternatively, that the lack of those will bring out the more ignoble parts of people's personalities. You know, but you know, OPN, Occupel has certainly demonstrated, and I've seen the change because I'm back in in the earlier days. There was some. You know, uh, strife, we'll just say. And, uh, but th I've seen peace made with former, you know, people who were, uh, strife makers or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, so it's good to see 
the healing going on and then the, the learning curve of tolerance happening. Okay, Johnny, <laughs> I got another call coming in. I'm going to pick that up. Thank you for those All words. Right, that's about half my rant later. Call from Oaks Spider. Good evening, Oak Spider. You're on the line and you are live. How you doing? This is Oak Spider. I'm uh, just calling to uh, say hello to everybody. And uh, how are you tonight? We're we're good. Where are you calling from, roughly? I'm calling from upstate New York. Upstate New York. And so um, are you a, a regular viewer of OPN, or is this your first time calling into our call-in show? I'm actually currently watching our global revolution and uh, just hanging out and seeing the show. So uh decided I'd call in and say hi to everybody and, that, uh, and uh, tell everyone what global rap means to me is just... Uh, or what Occupy means to me is to, uh, you know, just just be kind to, to everybody else and and love everybody else and you know be a community. You know, we don't we don't need to help each other over pennies. You know, so I just wanted to call and let everybody hear my point there. Well, that's a that's a great sentiment. We we really appreciate that. Um, have you? Can you give us a little background? How long have you been, you know, involved with Occupy or watching it? And maybe how did you come to it? Yeah, so I, I seen Occupy uh, right as it came out on September 11th. And uh, I've, I've stuck with it since, you know, I've been in the global rev room ever since. And, uh, you know, it's you need to stand up against the... Uh, you know, all this injustice that happens constantly. And I mean, it's a, there's systems in place that are doing this, you know, so it, it really, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, a lot to me to, to be able to do that for other people, to help other people. And, you know, that's, that's what really matters. It makes you, it makes you feel good. So I think that's what really matters. What people should really focus on is, you know, Somebody else feel good. You feel good yourself. So, what what a wonderful way of looking at it, and it's a it's a true statement of you know cooperation and interaction. Um, uh, I really respect that position. I I appreciate you calling in tonight. Do you have any uh, last words you'd like to leave with the viewers or the chatters? And we're we're getting. Uh, mirrored on global, I believe, too, so those folks there can hear you, too. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I would just like to say hi to everybody and, uh, you know, stay positive. And, uh, and uh, that's about it. Well, thank you so much for the call. I hope you have a good evening, and, and please visit us again. Okay, thanks. Bye. There it was Oak Spider. What a nice guy, huh? That was that was outstanding. Thank you for calling in, sir. And uh, Johnny, I know you're you're still watching, and you know I didn't. I hated to cut you off, but um, you know I didn't want to miss miss a call. So I hope you're you're okay with that. If not, you know how you can duly chastise me at a later time. Um, I love hearing from the new people. That's exactly right, Z. Um, so it's getting on about 9:30, and uh, I'm willing to take a couple of couple of uh, more calls if anybody has one. I would really love it if uh, ah we got ping. Good evening, ping. Ping, can you hear me? Hold on. One moment. One moment. Don't hang up. Can't start video. Try closing the other. Pro Pugh. Pugh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, I thought maybe I didn't have my Skype mic on. Hi, thank you for calling. I had to plug mine in. I forgot. <laughs> I'm very, very tired tonight, but I wanted to tell everybody that I love you all. And I'm so glad that I made it here. 
and that everybody calling in is so fantastic, and I really appreciate everything they're doing. Well, thank you so much. Let me make sure that everybody uh, is is hearing us okay on the chat. I think they are, but with the Skype coming in, it might be a little bit low. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I I can hear you. I can hear you. Hold on. It's the uh, the way. Give me one second. I need to change some settings or not. Well, they're going to have to turn up the volume. Never mind. Just go ahead. So, A, B, C, D, yeah. E, F, J. <laughs> no, you're good. It's you know, picking up on another driver, so uh, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. I just wanted to tell everybody I love you all, and I'm so glad that I know every single one of you. Um, well, we, we appreciate it, and I know you're at the end of a long work day and called in, so... Um, it was is very kind. So, really quick, tell us what um, tell us how Occupy has affected you. It's something I've waited for my whole life, and to see this movement take shape, there is no way, till my dying breath, that I will ever give up on this movement. Well, that's outstanding. You've been a tireless supporter and a. a, a great advocate for so many streamers and so many people involved with the movement and we really appreciate your effort and we need, need more chatters we need more chatters we need them <laughs> need more chats that's exactly right and we need you to take care of yourself you just need to listen to amigo's advice from earlier i don't know if you were you were here but he was talking about the needs for maintaining your health so you can stay in the long run because yeah, I'm tired tonight. Yep. I just want to say I love you all, and good night, folks. Good night, Pink. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, we'll do. Amigo can do a teach-in. So that was coming through on the Skype line, and I think I can uh, I'm gonna adjust the, the microphone on that a little bit. So... Um, should be picking up. It was going back through, blah blah blah. A lot of going, a lot of going on here. Throwing Skype into the mix um, makes a difference. So, thank you for your patience. I hope you guys were able to hear hear that. Um, so, we got any other calls coming in tonight, or should we uh, start wrapping it for this edition of the OPN Call-in Show? Um, I was really hoping that Thorstein would call. Uh, there's another new person, but um, I guess that just didn't work out. So maybe next time. Um, if there's not any more callers, we're going to probably uh, wrap it up. But oh, another call. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Call from Jay. Is this the world famous Jay Tao? This is Jay Period. <laughs> Jay Period, welcome to OPN. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing I just got to charge my phone about 20 seconds or I'm going to have to call you back. <laughs> <laughs> well, but yeah, this is the one and only actual Jay of mythology. Excellent. Then, okay. Yeah, I see you. Do you hear uh, someone that would be Imperial March by any chance right now? Um, no, what's that about? All right, because I'm talking to you in the past right now and talking to you in the present right now. Well, well then I'll try yep, to... I just heard myself. I'm on the feed. Right. So what's up, guys? Uh, we're really happy for you to call OPN and we are wondering how the Occupy movement may have affected your life. Uh, question is, how did my life affect the Occupy movement? You know, I am dead and deceased and they all heard me on the radio get shot. So, I mean, I am BJ. If you don't know who Jay is, just ask anyone of the originals and they'll know. I'm trying to, I got a problem. The reason I'm calling in right now is I'm trying to find 9,400 and, and no, 9,847 people are missing from Occupy. And I can tell you when and where each one of them disappeared. 
each group, rather. It's four different groups. A group of 9,000, they disappeared right in front of plain sight. All the cameras deactivated and turned off. Second group, 30 people disappeared. Uh, can't remember how. I'll get back to that. Now, 18 people disappeared on the steps of a building. They were in the time loop repeatedly over and over. And then there were about 700 people that did the test the number strike, yeah, about 700 people that disappeared in the darkness when all the lights went out in the park. They just disappeared. I was trying to get on board a uh, mythical, you know, hovercraft legend, one of my little magical tricks. But as you know, uh, not everything always works every time, so I'm trying to find them all. The weird side effect of this is, instead of 30,000 people dying during uh, the New York attack, you know, the Trade Center buildings, only 3,000 died. So I wasn't on the right track. I was wondering if our, any of the listeners out there would be able to give me information on what happened to those four groups of people. The group of 30 people, I keep forgetting how they disappeared, but I always remember later. So, that's my call from Jay. We need to find these four groups of people and figure out what happened to them. Well, thank you for your call. And all the and footage has been lost. Well, well, thank you for your call, and now we have a call out for assistance. So if anybody has information or footage, they can get it to Jay. Thanks for your call, buddy. All right. Thank you. Bye. Hey. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is live radio, and I'm a solo operation, so there's no screener. Yeah. So, you know... You got to admit, you don't hear that on mainstream media every night, right? Thank you, Jay, for calling. Um, is there any other calls? Or should we should we end on that? <laughs> that would be, you know, pretty good, right? So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. I think uh, tomorrow is a work day for me because I am a wage slave. But oh, we have another call. Call from Ruby. Ruby, you're on OPN. Thank you for calling. Hi. Yeah, uh, yeah it's kind of, you know, this will be a much much better wrapping, wrapping uh, call, than I think, you know. So, uh, let's, uh, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. How are you, dear? I'm I'm good. It's been a great night on OPN. I'm glad you're here with us. It's been fantastic, and I think you had a great idea to kind of focus um, people in on on the effect that Occupy's had because there's so many different things that people want to talk about and that people have to to um, that are people are working on, and and I think it's a basic. Um, I think it's a basic uh, need for all of us to be able to focus just a little bit every once in a while and say, why are we here? I I agree. So, you know, why don't I pose that question to you? Why why are you here, and how has Occupy affected you? Well, my grandchildren would say that I spend too much time on the computer, but... Um, when, when I first started watching Global Revolution, Hi Global Revolution, um, back at the beginning, and I was just I was just transfixed to it, and you know Lorenzo and Monica and all the kids that were in the park and the barber chair and the library was just like oh my God someone's finally doing it, and um, you know I've been a, an activist my whole life, my father before me and his father before him, and just to be able to see actually concrete. To be able to look at it and see it growing and feel it, it was just amazing to me. When you've been just a tireless supporter, um, I, I don't know how you do it, you know, with your family and all that. But you know, and and now even Mr. Ruby is getting involved because you told us the other night there, before the movie during the pre-show, he was rocking out to the Talking Heads with us. <laughs> he does take the videos. <laughs> He, um, you know, he spends a lot of time looking at the back of my head while I'm on the computer, and he's been very, very good and patient and, and kind, and he understands that he knows that I'd be out there. If I could, I would be out there. I would so have been sleeping at Zuccotti. And, um, you know, we're a little older now, and uh, sometimes these things aren't possible, and I, I really feel like it gave me, you know, even just being in the chat rooms, even just guiding people to a... Um, 
a program that's coming on or, or saying so and so is going to be live tomorrow or, or, you know, watching Lorenzo, uh, live stream with his hands cuffed behind his back, at, you know, in the trees. And just, there's just been so many things that have happened, um, with live stream and with the different channels that have just been amazing to me. It amazed, these people amaze me. It's um, pretty pretty impressive, and I always find that just when you're, or I'm speaking for myself, just when I'm about to just throw my hands up in the air and give up on hope, something awesome will happen, and I'm good to go for another month. Exactly. We were in the room this morning, and we were talking about this, this show coming up, and, you know, there, you go through ups and downs, and people have, you know, it has been relatively quiet. There have been some outstanding actions like D.C. today, and, and Abby was talking about uh, Wisconsin earlier. You know, there's always something happening, and I, I know that um, OWO, OWNN, uh, Occupy World News Now, has been fabulous about getting live streamers on from all over the world. And, uh, and you know, it's, it, I think the, the thing about Occupy that is so thrilling to me is that it's, it's right there. It's right now. It's happening right now. We're calling the police stations. We're calling the uh, the uh, uh, bail bondsmen. You know, we're we're sending pizzas. We're sending socks. We're, we're we're participating any way we can to be able to make it easier for these people on the ground because we really want to be them <laughs> and we want to support them. You know. That's a good point, and you know. That's it. You know, we participate any way we can. And uh, exactly. Thank you so much for giving us a call in, and I think we're gonna gonna wrap it on your call tonight. So you, and you did a great show. Oh well, thank you. As you know, all I do is mash the buttons. So thank you so much for calling, <laughs> and we will see you around. Take good care. Thank you, everybody. Love you. Bye. Okay, folks, we're going to put on a little patty and take this on out. Thank you guys for watching tonight and listening, and we hope you enjoyed it. Um, coming up Sunday, I'll be working with DC Media Group on the Forward on Climate Actions. We're going to start at about... Um, start about 10 in the morning I think and we'll go to the end so dcmediagroup.info thank you all the callers who participated everybody that watched us OWNN also Global Rev thank you for covering us tonight uh, we really appreciate it our next show will be on Tuesday evening I'm making it up oh yeah the million woman marches tomorrow uh, billion billion uprising um, OPN will be Democracy Now! in the morning. And uh, thanks a lot. Y'all get out there. Be strong. Do good works. Thank you for watching.